Good evening to all of you. I take this opportunity to thank the convener, Dr. Rajini Panchan, for giving me this opportunity to chair the session. So this session will have a keynote address and two presentations. I request the speakers to keep up to their time and cooperate. First, I would uh, request uh, K. Mohan to present his keynote address. Uh, this talks mainly for uh, gas hydrates and uh, benthic foraminifera uh, relationships. Uh, I made it three different aspects for this particular talk. One is what are the proxies uh, involved for these uh, gas hydrates identifications uh, with the small introductions. The second one is uh, benthic foraminifera uh, relationships. So there is a group of uh, Benthic foraminifera assemblages, some of these individuals. So we have taken uh, uh, the considerations for this, how it is presented uh, in this particular area. So for that, I am taken for this Blake Ridge Fascia study area. A third one is uh, geochemical aspect, uh, mainly for this TOC I am taken. Uh, mainly uh, with the TOC data, so total organic carbon, so inorganic carbon. Uh, from that, so we estimated uh, the methane uh, in cascade uh, Topics already uh, told, so I can start. Uh, everyone knows uh, what is gas hydrate, so I can skip. Yes. What is the importance? Mainly, if you look, uh, the day one, uh, Mr. Sir uh, discussed about uh, many things yeah, about yeah, oil yeah, and uh, yeah. what is the crisis it is happening uh, after 20 years and uh, what are the changes that is going to happen. It's all the things, uh, and uh, we, we, we are also looking for this, what is the alternative things, uh, what is the alternative energy resource we can use from this our side. So that's uh, here, uh, this gas hydrate plays. So, there is a many research it's carried out related to these gas hydrates, but when you are coming for this so microfossil aspect, it is very less. And Indian scenario, if you are looking, very, very less. Uh, so very few groups are working for in this aspect. Uh, this is uh, globally is, uh, how these gas hydrates are distributed. So if you look so overall, around 220 uh, sites, so they are uh, Present and Indian side, uh, there is uh, more prominent sites you can find it, and uh, few more uh, new uh, sites. It's going from this uh, our site. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, like ONGC, so DGH, and several agencies. So uh, it is involved, including NIVALS. So why uh, very much interest from our side? There is a huge uh, amount of gas hydrates present for these uh, various uh, uh, places uh, like uh, permafrost in this uh, continental and uh, marine. So marine seabeds, the huge amount of gas hydrate present. So you can look at uh, the country-wise distributions I am given from uh, myself. Yes. So what are the proxies uh, we can uh, sort out? Uh, we know that. Sir, uh, if you are coming for this most promising techniques from our side, uh, geophysical methods. Uh, because uh, you can, uh, the data is so uh, quickly, you can get it and you go for this analysis. If you are coming for this microfossil site, so uh, I am sure uh, we can't get it immediately, this results. So uh, for the research purpose, uh, we can do it. Uh, why? Uh, so maybe that in that case you can ask. Several or else a few places, a geophysical method also failed. Absent for this, uh, like for example, BSR we are talking about, that's absent. But due to this geochemical and micro fossils uh, aspect, they identified and mainly for this plate reach. 
this is a huge history, but I just highlighted only for this Indian sector side. The first one is 1996, so it has happened from this uh, gas hydrate uh, programs, and then uh, 2004 and 2006, so uh, there is a lot of expeditions that's happened, and uh, several cores is explored from this our side, and still it is going for these uh, several studies from our country. I can skip. There is a geo physicals, geochemical, and uh, who are working, what is the place, and uh, everything you can look at. And uh, mainly, uh, I can come to this uh, micro paleontological aspect. If you're looking uh, for this micro paleontological aspect, uh, the difficulties, if you're looking from this our side, uh, we can't actually finding any uh, key species in the particular places. Uh, globally, if you are looking from our side, again it is very difficult. We are not finding any endemic species, uh, which is we are getting, for example, uh, in Blake Ridge. The same things it is not actually repeating, or uh, maybe that uh, we are not getting from this Cascadia mountain. So there is a difficulties we are facing because uh, most probably that uh, depth of this uh, water, water columns, uh, sediments uh, in this particular place. And the gas hydrates formations, if you're looking, that is also happening with the several uh, process. So if you're looking for this all the aspect, uh, we are not actually finding uh, this exactly some of the species, but at least we can go for this uh, genus level. There is a several studies, uh, you can find it, and uh, myself handled two study areas because I got four from there only. So according to that, so I have established uh, some of the words. One is in Blake Ridge, another one is in the gas hydrates. If you are interested, uh, you can uh, visit uh, this IODP, and uh, there is a uh, several course available and several programs upcoming. You can maybe propose and uh, you start your research also. Yeah, the first study is uh, I am coming. Blake Ridge. So why I am taking Blake Ridge? If you are looking for this research, the 50 percentage of research are related to this uh, Blake Ridge that is going. Several uh, researcher uh, it is working with this uh, various proxies, and I am also taking. And uh, from this particular area, few species uh, I have found it, and uh, it is showing for this. Uh, uh, very good uh, correlations with this uh, gas hydrate zones. How we classified the gas hydrate zones from this particular area, again we are taking support for this BSR one. So how this depth wise it is present and the three different zones we made it from ourselves. One is uh, free methane zone, the gas hydrate zone and uh, methane free zone. So three different zones uh, uh, I have made it. And from that particular place, how this uh, benthic foraminiferal distribution it is present, according to that, we are going for the, some of the classifications. Uh, if you look this particular area, around 205 specimens or species so we identified. From that, around uh, 40 to uh, 45 species so it is showing for this uh, continuous uh, uh, the trend. And if you look at, uh, I made it uh, the zone, sorry. Uh, methane free zone, uh, there is no methane and uh, gas hydrate zone and uh, the gas form as uh, methane, uh, free methane zone, uh, how this uh, gaseous form uh, it is present. So according to that, so we are looking this uh, species assemblages. And uh, what is the relation so, to understand this particular concept? So we need to look. Uh, I am uh, just uh, taken for this individual species, it's very difficult from my side to uh, correlate from my side. So what I have done, so I just going with this uh, different type of method, so maybe that uh, grouping the species like uh, milieu lights, uh, high organic uh, species, uh, something uh, ugly natured, uh, seeds related species. The previous uh, uh, SCM uh, images, uh, if you look, uh, the many species, uh, I put it in this high uh, organic urban, uh, the species. According to that, uh, if you come for this agglutinated species, 
Okay. So I just made it this three zone and the three zones how this species distribu distribution it is present. Okay. That is the main observations we are going for this initial stage. This oceanographic settings and everything so we can take it for this later. So if you are looking this particular case, the agglutinated species during this particular uh, zone. So this particular, uh, this area, so it is covering up to 5.8 million years. From that, if you are looking, this uh, 5 million years, 5.3 million years to uh, this uh, gasetic zone, so 2.9 million years. Uh, from this particular zone, so this agglutinated species showing uh, uh, very uh, less abundance. Uh, also, uh, the younger interval also uh, you can find it. Uh, it is very rare. We are finding um, milleoids. Uh, again, uh, it is showing for this very rare. There, there is a one reasons most probably that uh, resolutions of this uh, sample also uh, very less. There are, but if you look at this number of uh, maybe that study sites, so this uh, entire uh, Blake Ridge, and uh, we are taken almost uh, seven different sites. Uh, from that, uh, few sites are very less uh, resolutions and uh, some of the sites like uh, 995, uh, A if you are taking around 590 samples, it's covering for this particular interval. So we analyzed the entire samples and uh, from that also it is showing this very less percentage. Uh, also you can look at uh, eugerinites uh, and uh, sheep related species also. Uh, seeps related species are showing uh, very good uh, this, uh, the distributions and uh, it is showing for this higher uh, percentage in uh, gas hydrate zones. Uh, also this huge uh, in it so because of uh, this is coming this uh, high organic species and it is showing very good uh, uh, trending for this almost all the study area. Coming to this, uh, I can conclude that particular site break reach. The Blake Ridge, three different zones, we made it and we are looking, but there is no any single specimen, uh, it's not showing any correlations within these seven sites. Because uh, each site is having with this uh, different type of uh, uh, the sedimentation rates and we have to look at for this uh, all the paleoceanographic condition also. Coming to this Cascadia margin, it's around 450 samples, it's covering for this 1.2 million years. And from this particular place, if you are looking, uh, we are going for this TOC. TOC with this estimations of this meeting. Um, I can go directly. Uh, there is uh, two papers, so the estimations related to this uh, meeting. So my paper is in the second, uh, in Indian side it is first. Uh, we are taken for this several proxies like uh, porosities, mineral densities, total organic carbon, utilizable uh, organic carbons atomic weights for this particular, uh, this minerals. And uh, we are taken for this particular thing, so very small, uh, this areas, maybe that 1,000 cubic centimeters, the sediments, and uh, using this particular uh, formula. And we find it uh, certain results from this our side. Uh, based upon that, uh, we are taken almost, uh, not only for this, our study area is 1325B, but we are taken for this entire study areas and we want to look at uh, how this uh, entire area it is distributed. So based upon that we are going because if I am going with this only one my uh, the study areas, the values are not actually that uh, giving uh, the proper uh, weight. So I want to go for this uh, entire study areas and what are the data already published, all the things that we have taken. And from that, we uh, identified the TOC trends. If you're looking from this uh, TOC trends, and what is we uh, estimated this, uh, uh, the methane, that's almost uh, showing for this uh, similar trend, uh, you can find it. And uh, TOC repo, uh, data for this particular area. Uh, this area, so if you're looking for this uh, gas hydrate, the previous thing is I made it for these three different zones. But a Cascadia margin just above this, uh, so the sample uh, it is coming for this above this uh, BSR and uh, up, that's also up, uh, covering up to 1.2 million years. So anyways, the estimations when we are going and uh, it is accepted, uh, what is already published with this uh, various people are estimated with this uh, different proxies.
I don't have any conclusions, but uh, there is a recommendation. So. Uh, since if you are looking from this our side, uh, there is a several research it's going from this uh, outside uh, India so uh, like that. Uh, we can implement uh, such kind of work from this uh, Indian core also. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bowen.